go for round two here at Daytona. It's the Whelan Mazda MX-5 Cup for 2024. Live from Daytona. Good morning, everybody. Slightly overcast skies as we go for the second race of the 2024 season. The global sensation is back. It's the Whelan Mazda MX-5 Cup presented by Michelin as we look down on a 28-car field. Trey Adam is alongside me, John Hindorf, and we're just off the beach here at the world-famous Daytona International Speedway. This circuit, which is 12 turns, 3.56 miles, well known for a 24-hour race, but it doesn't take 24 hours to give you good racing. As a matter of fact, we get it done in 45 minutes. But this course is known mostly for the banking. We like the infield. You've got the International Horseshoe with all the flags, the Western Horseshoe, which seems to catch some people out, the big turn up through turn six, back on to NASCAR turn one, and of course, the famous Le Mans Chicane, which people either get right or they get very, very wrong in spectacular fashion, and it leads to some good footage. Yesterday's race gave us plenty of that with a couple people. Well, they got a bit grassy and reminded me of Light McQueen. Certainly did. A huge crowd on hand, and they were royally uh, entertained yesterday. Gresham Wagner pulling off. Uh, Connor Sillage pulling off in the lead in the classic master, the red and white car, and all kinds of Archie Bargy going on behind. It was Celine Rolland who got his bumper knocked loose by Tyler Gonzalez, Heather Hadley going for a wild ride, as I mentioned, through the Western Horseshoe. Keeping it all together though, and then it started to get really real with four wide through turn one. That was not for the finish though, but Jared Thomas taking the lead and running away with it, at least for a little while. Then we had Weston Workman, the scholarship winner, leading the way for a lot of the race, getting worked loose towards the end. And all of a sudden, it was the youngster, Julian DaCosta, leading the way, but it didn't last very long. DaCosta led out of the Le Mans chicane 11th across the line. And who was going to take victory? Well, it came in the form of McCombie McAleer and Gresham Wagner actually getting a puncture as he crossed the start-finish line. First and third for McCombie McAleer Racing, second for Sato Motorsport and Tyler Gonzalez. But it was the day belonging to Tyler Gonzalez, his rival, Gresham Wagner. Who's it going to be today? Well, it could be any one of the 28 cars starting. Incredible to think that the driver that led out of the Le Mans chicane for the final time finished down in 11th <laughs> yesterday. Here's the starting grid with Mazda for the Wheel of Mazda MX-5 Cup presented by Michelin. Second race of the year and of the ring end, it's Jared Thomas. For JTR on pole position, he's got his teammate Aaron Johnson in the new colours right alongside him, 96 and 24 on the front row. Then Gillian DeCosta, has he learned something from yesterday? I bet he has. Oh, yeah. Nathan Nicholson is another rookie in fourth position. Cracking crop of seven rookies this year. Preston Pardas and Noah Harmon, another rookie on row three. Weston Workman being quick in free practice all week. He didn't quite get it right in qualifying for either of the quick laps that he tried to put in. He was sharp at the end of the field yesterday, but needs to be there a little bit further up at the end. Gresham Wagner's alongside him on row four. Then Nate Cicero and Jeremy Fletcher on row five. Connor Zilic, Celine Roland on row six. Peter Atwater and Cody Ware on row seven. Tyler Gonzalez second yesterday with a big push uh, to, get the, to get the leader through, actually. <laughs> He's on the inside of row eight with Jonathan Neuser for another one of the nine BSI racing cars uh, alongside. Row nine. John jo Jean Jodouin and Alex Bashura. Alex in the 33 car will be looking for a little bit more, uh, a little bit more yes than yesterday. Then it's Heather Hadley and Ethan Tyler. Uh, Heather with her best qualifying yesterday inside the top 10. Had to fight back from a couple of off-track moments yesterday. Ethan Tyler on the outside of row 10. Nick Schaefer, Willie Hyman on 11, James Hayosh and Cody Powell on 12. On row 13, Kristen Hodnerland and Sally Mott. Farron Siddiqui, who had the big slide through the, the, the grass in a uh, 
Lightning McQueen tribute. Uh, he's on Ciao. position 27. And then Peter DeLong and Grant West. Grant has been withdrawn for the weekend, but I mentioned his name because he is on the entry list. And what's the most important thing we learned from yesterday's race? Early on, teammates work together. They get to the front, but at the end of the race, it is an absolute free-for-all. So keep an eye on the front row at the beginning of the race. Jared Thomas and Aaron Johnson, they are teammates right now, but in 40 minutes, they might not be. What we saw yesterday is that the front group did not get whittled down at all. It was 11 or 12 cars pretty much all the way through the race once the split had happened. Three quarters of an hour, full racing speed, and we are racing in the second championship event of 2024 for Whelan MX5 Mazda. Paul Mann in the Soul Red, number 96, Jared Thomas, champion last year, champion in 2022. First time we've had someone have two championships, first time we've had someone back to back, of course, on the championship trail as well. And the 96 car leads at the moment, but down the inside, the dark colours of the blue and black number 24 of Aaron Johnson. It was a great start by Julian DeCosta, who actually got right up on the bumper of Jared Thomas to give him a push, making sure that Johnson couldn't work his way in and weasel in between the two cars. But now Julian finding himself back in third, settling into that position and learning from two veterans of the series who have a good deal of race wins between the two of them. So. Don't forget, we talk about the cash at the end of this race, but points gained not just at the end of this race, Shay, will go into the prize pot, if you will, for the championship season. Ten points earned from pole position. That's already gone the way of Jared Thomas. Ten more points up for the fastest lap and ten more points for the most laps led. And those points do make a difference. Last year, we had Connor Zilich not run every single race. He did win four of the ones that he was here for, but he earned more bonus points than anyone else over the course of the season. Kept him inside the top ten of the championship, so he walked away with the comedy big check on the championship night at Road Atlanta. It was large in terms of its size and um, pretty hefty in terms of its amount as well two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a prize pot that's up around 1.2 million dollars for the whole season i can't help but go a bit austin powers when i say that it's an extraordinary amount of money and uh, master literally putting their money where their sport is with the will master mx5 cup this Just is something we didn't see no, yesterday. Six cars. There's six cars at the front group, and they are working two by two. Uh, it's interesting because only one of the two Rick Ware cars is actually up there right now, and that is the number 52 of Preston Pardis, a man who knows Mazdas and knows how to win on super speedways. He won the SCCA runoffs in Indy a few years back, and he's got quite a few NASA wins to his credit. Remember you said we didn't see six cars getting away. Yeah. Uh, we're not now either because we've joined back up again. Heather Hadley with a spin at turn one in the blue and white 54 shift sponsored car shift up now oh big moment for gresham wagner but uh, there's contact and i think that might be a broken steering arm as well who's that spearing off on the outside is, is that, that Costa? is it Costa? yes it is oh, no. 78 car no it's got back on so I, that was an, an again an odd one that was somebody pushing gresham wagner who slewed to the right, then the left, he seemed to get it back, but then almost in a separate incident, it was all going wrong for Da Costa. Heather Hadley looked like she might have had a wee bit of help as well. So we got one clean lap before they started getting a little bit feisty in today's race. Clearly a lot of pent up energy, everybody going back and watching the race after it took place last night. Why wouldn't you? Especially if you were involved. Yes, someone really speared across the nose of Gresham Wagner's car and DaCosta did manage to rejoin, so hopefully everybody can get back up to pace and get settled in again. In the first race of the season, we had some messages from Race Control, which kind of explains how the racing unfolds here, which is incident with car number whatever, Dave Miggins, and unidentified. And multiple. Multiple was the multiple. one that I liked yesterday. Yes. That, that made me laugh a lot. 
uh, and the guys just to our left in race control have got to pick the bones out of this at some stage. There is a JTR train leading the field right now. Aaron Johnson, car number 24 for uh, turn two, which is an organization based out of Northern California. He's been working with them quite a bit, actually acting as their race director. So Aaron knows how to race fairly. Not that he always necessarily does that. No, just kidding. Aaron is a very fair boy. But behind him, Nathan Nicholson, one of those rookies that we're talking about, learning very, very quickly how to run in the Whalen Mazda MX-5 Cup. He was second in the shootout coming into this year, so we walked away with the comedy big check for $80,000. And right now, he's got the two-time champ on his bumper. He is showing Jared Thomas which way to go around the track. And now Connor Zillich has joined the fun, because why not? Sun has come out. Track temperature will start to rise. This might affect the way the cars handle. The engineers will have set the cars up with starting temp uh, starting temperatures and pressures uh, in their Michelin tyres that they're expected to go through the whole race. So there was two bumps there. Gresham Wagner and Ooh, then... Cody Ware. Cody Ware was the one who got into Gresham Wagner across his nose. Yeah, good spot. But where did DaCosta get hit? DaCosta got hit by oh, Preston Pardis. Yes, so DaCosta hit Gresham Wagner and then Preston Pardis as DaCosta was lifting out of it, then caught up because he, he really don't want to come out of the throttle in any way, shape or form. Nope, here. nope, and both of the Rick Ware drivers know that, and that's why they kept their feet, I was going to say their foot in it, their feet in it. Yeah, yeah. So that was, uh, <laughs> it was red onto black and then oh. blue onto red. I'm not sure how many points you get for that in billiards. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but right now, you know those great pictures of the dog hiding amongst all the sheep? That's what we've got right now in the form of Connor Zilich, who is in the JTR train. Connor representing BSI Racing. So he right now is on an island of his own, willing Celine Roland to try and catch up his partner in crime from yesterday's race. Celine is back in 10th. Aaron Johnson then taking it on from the front of the field from Connor Zilich in the soul red and white classic master written on the side of that car in second place. Third place, Jared Thomas trying to squeeze his way back into contention. Those have got away. There's three or four cars that have got away. Thomas is in there. Also, right in there, the number 56, the Nathan Nicholson, the rookie, as that top four squeezed away for a moment on the tri-oval. But here come the rest of the pack coming through, led by Tyler Gonzalez in the white car with the green and red on the bonnet on the hood of that car. He goes deep and around the outside. He's going to pop into the picture at the front of the field any second now. And once again, Shea Adam, we are back to having 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Most I reckon the there's field. 14. I reckon there's 14 cars there within what I would call in this type of racing striking distance. Now, that might be a second or a second and a half. But these open top cars with the FIA roll cage in them, they make a big hole in the air, and that's a great opportunity to get into that disturbed air. There's very little aero on these cars, so you pick up a huge slipstream, a draft, and where better to exploit that than here on the high banks of Daytona. Out of turn six and onto the far side of the circuit once again. Let's see where the moves start to come. Surely they'll behave line astern going into the Le Mans chicane. They'll, they'll stay two by two. Gresham Wagner down in 12th position, 13th position. And I think he's just out of that lead group. Yeah, he's biding his time at this point. He did that yesterday in the race too and wound up first across the finish line as they go three wide into the Le Mans chicane and taking the lead is Nathan Nicholson for the first time in his young career in this championship. But he has Connor Zilich and Tyler Gonzalez right behind him, two guys who know how to win at this place. To the high side then, the, well, I think we can call them veterans, these yes. two, as they go up and over the young Nathan Nicholson from JTR Motorsports. And look at the difference. Nicholson on his Ooh. own down low has lost, what, eight, ten cars lengths as they come onto the tri-oval. He's got to get back in the draft here. He'll slot onto the back of the lead group. And now there's four cars together as they go across the line with the number 24 of coming through of Aaron Jansson. Oh, 
after the contact with Julian DaCosta, Cody Ware has retired. He did make it back into the pit lane after continuing around slowly. And once again, everybody is back together on the infield. Panasilic takes the middle of the circuit in the classic Mazda Orlando sponsored car. Then Tyler Gonzalez, mostly white car with the yellow rollover hoop. There's red and green on there as well for Tyler. Very proud of his heritage through the kink, the dog leg, if you will, the left-hander pretty much flat through there, even side by side. That's a brave wow. move for the blue and white number 52 as that car comes through for Preston Pardis. And he gets the pass done on nice. Aaron John Salm. And now all of a sudden, Celine Roland up into fifth. Remember I said that Connor Zilich was willing his teammate forward? It's worked. All of a sudden, Celine is in the fight for the lead. That's the white car with the blue and yellow. Easy to spot even from up high in our global broadcast centre share. Adam John Heindorf with 35 minutes of this still to go. Yes, that's right. This isn't the last lap. We'll have this going on for more than half an hour, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us for 2024. More of the same big wiggle from Celine Roland was getting pushed by the number 22 of Jeremy Fletcher. Race director had a stern word with everybody after all those bumpers were dislodged yesterday. Pretty much all of that was happening on the high back. And it does need to be said, none of the bumpers came off. So right. it looked bad, but safety-wise, everybody was good. That's a good point. They've been told they can bump draft in a straight line, but no extended or extensive pushing and contact on the high banks. That's very close. That might be too close. That might be being looked at. Also, of course, no cooling air going into the front of Conor Zilic's car there as they come through the tri-oval. There's been a penalty that is significant. Tyler Gonzalez, penalty, incident responsibility with the 78 of Julian DaCosta. 10 seconds applied post-race. 10 seconds in this series is 20th. If you win, that's 20th. Yeah. That's uh, huge and a problem. Peter Atwater. But Peter Atwater in the gold or mustard colored car. There's damage to the left rear. He's got that number 26 rolling forward for JTR Motorsports Engineering. Now, the question would be in that golden green car, jump or pushed? I think what did we'll he find out. out there? What did he hit out there? That, that's going to be an interesting one to find out. We'll get some news on that, I'm sure, in a moment or two as Tyler Gonzalez now heads to the lead. He will have been told these cars do have pits to car radio, very sophisticated racing cars. If you watch us talk about them a lot, you'll know that they come in from Japan as a stock showroom car. Atwater back into the pit lane. Sorry, John, just to point out, we would we do stay green. Yeah. No need for a Whalen Mazda MX-5 Cup safety car as of yet, which is a shame because it's so beautiful. It, it's fine to see it at the start and the end. Yeah, yeah I, you know, it, I like to see a nice clean race. So showroom stock cars come to the US, go to the brothers Fliss, who strip them down. Engine is taken out, sealed with a Mazda Motorsport set of seals put to one side the rest of the car then pretty, pretty much stripped to its bare shell and the cage goes in the fire suppression system the new sadev sequential racing gearbox is introduced to the engine and that is then refitted in the car racing seat racing steering wheel all kinds Ooh. of data logger all sideways and a huge Sideways swipe, but this is two cars right on the fastest part of the circuit. Preston Partis and Nathan Nicholson. Preston Partis losing it and actually sliding up into the wall, came down across. Nathan tried to avoid, had nowhere to go, though. He was already as low as he could get, and now his car is stopped in the middle of the racetrack. The yellows are out. We are going to get the safety car. Interestingly, I think that is a local yellow at the moment, but I'm sure it will be upgraded because the cars are still racing on the infield. We've not yet get, got full course yellow, now it comes on. <sighs> so were there any passes made in the intervening four corners? That started with a push coming into the tri-oval and... Further back. It was almost at the exit of turn, turn four, four when it started, and then Preston Partis getting up into the wall. I 
there was another dark red car involved. It was right in the leading group. I, I think it was Thomas. Jared Thomas. I, was, I, I almost said that before. Pardus then sideswipes the wall, and unfortunately for the number 56 coming through, Nathan Nicholson in the Whelan car, there was absolutely nowhere to go. He'd already taken to the normally pristine grass right in front of us. And at that point, he'd committed to being down low and there was nowhere further he could go. Really heads up driving by everybody else. And by Nicholson, by the way, who got on the middle pedal very quickly indeed to slow himself down. There's another car. Preston's parked Preston's, just down there. Preston Pardis has gone the furthest towards pit exit. Wow, that could have been so much worse as Nicholson came up the track in front of two or three different cars. And then a second group having to pick their way through as well. There is nothing worse than being the driver in the car and just waiting for the thud. If it's happened to you on the street, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's an accident in front of you on a highway. You pull up, you put your four-way hazard flashes on, and all you can do is look in the mirror and hope that all the drivers are paying attention. It's a horrible feeling on the street. It's just as bad on the road as well as Preston Pardis would have seen those cars coming towards him. But the safety features of the Mazda MX-5 Cup car have done their job. He's fine, he's moving. Uh, in the car and young Nate Nicholson as well. I think Nate might have been talking to the safety workers going, yeah. can't I just drive it straight back across the grass and get to the pit lane? And they're going, no, no, no. Our AMR safety team talked to them at breakfast this morning. And they, again, it's the tradition that I say to them, please have a very quiet and boring day. And they know exactly what I'm saying. They are the most experienced people at a racetrack that we never want to see them use their experience, basically. Great set of men and women, love their motor racing. A lot of DJ and the rest of the teams around the circuit. And already the intervention vehicle, the Porsche Cayenne GTS V8, rapid response vehicle. And that will be taking the drivers back. Well, that will have put everybody's pulse rate up just a little bit. Great work on the flag stand as well, I should say, because the yellows came out very, very quickly indeed as that was happening underneath them. Tyler Gonzalez was leading, it all went on behind him. It was definitely Jared Thomas that started that into the wall for Preston Pardis, and then Nicholson's car arrives at the scene of the accident. The really worrying, how did Pardis keep that car down low with all that suspension damage? The worrying bit was when Nicholson went up the circuit and completely at that point as a passenger, four cars avoid him and then he's stuck in the middle of the track and there's a bit of drafting going on there as well with cars coming through and it's so easy to be unsighted there, Shay. It and really that's is. Quick. That's quick down there. They've not scrubbed up that off that much speed. No, and, and even when you see the yellows from that far away, it is hard to get the car slowed down with so much momentum. These are 2,500 pound cars, let's not forget. They are heavy and they're safe. They're, they're built with these safety uh, equipment and cages incorporated into them. So they're not fleet necessarily, but good news to see Preston Partis out of that stricken car down going into the entrance of turn one as now the field is under the control of the safety car and we do have flatbed trucks coming around the track so these cars will not flat tow which means we'll be behind the safety car for at least a couple of minutes more just under 27 minutes to go the first big incident of the 2024 Whelan Mazda MX-5 presented by Michelin tire season the good news is both the drivers have walked away you don't know whether to stick or twist in situations like that. You're coming along, particularly if you're in a pack, even lifting off if the guys behind haven't seen it, then you're likely to get a tap, but certainly jumping on the brakes, which is what you really want to do. Oh, look at that in front of me. I want to jump on the brakes. But you can't. You have to be cognizant of what's going on around you and start to pick your way through. That's hard enough with one car when it's two or multiple cars that are moving in different directions. 
and when you're going at a good rate of speed to begin with. Cause well, that's flat out round here. Exactly. That, that's not exactly uh, taking your time. Hello to all the fans who are here around the circuit. If you're camping and maybe you are somehow still snoozing, sleeping in after a late night last night, can't imagine why, uh, this would be a wonderful alarm clock for you. It's going to be a big crowd for the 60-second running of the Rolex 24 hours of Daytona. And Mazda, I think now there would be a riot if we took the Whelan Mazda MX-5s off the Daytona undercard because it has become a fan favourite. New for 2024 are red, silver and black Mazda MX-5 Cup car, the Whelan Influence on that car, clear to see with the hazard lights. Well, in one of the biggest suppliers of emergency lightning for first responders around the world. And we learned yesterday about how they use satellite technology to synchronize on first response vehicles, which is one of the coolest things I have ever heard or seen. Get online and search it. It is absolutely brilliant to watch clear up continues we're under yellow flag at almost half distance of round two of the 2024 season and delighted to say that joining us in the global broadcast center is brad O'Day, the chief marketing marketing officer for mazda north america brad thank you for being with us um, sad to, to see that we're not racing at the moment but it gives us the perfect opportunity to talk to you, um, another great season of Wheel and Mazda MX-5 Cup underway yesterday and carrying on today. You must be delighted with what you've seen already. Yeah, very delighted. The race yesterday, highly competitive, fantastic finish. And, you know, we, Jonathan and I were talking about this yesterday that, you know, this track is fantastic for this kind of racing and the drafting that the teams get, you know, and the racers get um, on this straightaway uh, makes for super exciting racing. And you could have them eight deep coming around turn four and you don't know who's going to win. They're all just a millisecond apart from each other. So, I mean, we've talked about it a lot over the years. And in my view, this is probably some of the best racing out there right now. Well, well it's, a, it's a North American championship and it's Mazda North America who put this together and support it. Are you aware of the global reach that this championship has well we we have fans all over the world we're very appreciative of everybody uh, uh their enthusiasm for this racing and and like i've said it's it's fantastic rating racing it's affordable racing it's accessible racing it's awesome to see these young kids you know kind of growing up into the sport and uh, doing amazing things so miles is glad to be a part of it uh, when I got out of the track last night, which was quite late, um, I checked some of the messages and some of the message boards. The guys down in Australia on the shakedown message board, uh, we've got people at, uh, at Dubai this weekend for the 24 hours at Dubai. The amount of love for this championship globally is, is massive. Um, what do you put that down to? And why is the MX-5 still, I mean, it's not in its first flush of youth now, in its fourth iteration, but... Uh, few tweaks for the streetcar for 2024 what do you put the the um, the success of this championship down to well I think it's a lot of things I mean one is is you know the MX-5 has been a fantastic sports car that revived the love of driving you know when it was first introduced uh, some time ago and I think you know it's still a very accessible and affordable car and from a driving characteristic standpoint um, you know that car it's it's balance allows you to drive that car and have a kind of a visceral exhilaration that you you, you know you don't get from cars that are under a hundred thousand dollars right so i think it's that piece of it and i think also is that you know these are these are uh, uh family teams that are out here working hard every day racing really well and i can see the global enthusiasm for the series because the car has a lot of uh, uh, visibility and acceptance around the world, and, and I think people love the competition of it, right? So, uh, Mazda Globally has a philosophy of right sizing, whether that's how big the battery is in a hybrid to make sure it doesn't add too much weight. We've just seen the in the UK the introduction of a straight six uh, diesel engine. Uh, M60, uh, uh, which is just a phenomenal car. We've got a rotary engine range extender in Europe as well now for the 
to the MX-30, which I've driven and is phenomenally clever. It really is. Is that part of what makes Mazda Mazda? It's not the biggest car company in the world, but is it the cleverest? Well, I think ingenuity plays a, a big part of who we are as a challenger brand, right? And trying to find different ways to bring the joy of driving to life for customers around the world. And um, yeah, we do seek alternative uh, ways of, of doing things. We kind of call it our challenger spirit. And um, I think it's really important. And we're in an industry right now with a variety uh, of different powertrain needs for different customers around the world. And, you know, Mazda still attract customers that love to drive. So we do put a lot of our emphasis on the engineering of our vehicles. We try to make our cars very human centric in the way that we engineer them. Uh, we put the driver in the middle of everything that we do. And, you know, we do make some compromises to get the ideal driving. Uh, and the, whichever car you get behind the wheel of, as soon as you get hold of that nice, thick steering wheel, you feel a little bit of the MX-5 in every Everything. single one of them. I know you see it, but it's absolutely true. Brad, final question. We've got Brad Odep with us the uh, from Mazda USA. How long can you keep the Mazda MX-5 in production, given everything in the automotive world? Well, I mean, I think you saw at the uh, Tokyo Auto Salon that we had a new interpretation, a concept car of another sports car um, that um, will have very similar characteristics to uh, the MX-5. And I think as long as there's uh, sufficient demand in the marketplace for these kinds of cars, we're going to continue to try to build them. And, uh, you know, our goal is to really continue to bring the joy of driving to life in a, in a world of automotive that's maybe losing a little bit of humanity and a little bit of soul. So. People still love to drive. We love to drive and we love that you're doing it. Three pedals, still have to master that heel and toe. Brad Odep, thank you very much indeed for coming in. We'll see you throughout the season, I hope. More yeah, than that. Uh, indeed, couple of times. sir. All right, thank, thank you very you, much. Sir. Thank you. For the, for the joy of driving, uh, Mazda and the MX-5, and that was the, the voice of Chief Marketing Officer for Mazda North America, Brad Odep, and... Uh, we thank Mazda for the continued support of this series and indeed the Miata Cup and the Spec Series, that's where a lot of these drivers have come from, Shay Adam. Yep, and our Whalen Mazda MX-5 Cup safety car has pulled back into the pit lane. The field is once again under the control of Connor Zilich as they come through NASCAR Turn 4. Line astern, no passing yet because the green flag is not out, but as soon as it flies, it is fair game once again. And then we're back to racing with 18 and a half minutes to go. Take a deep breath. It might be the last one you get in the next 18 and a half minutes. Green flag, and we're racing again in round two of the Whelan Mazda MX-5 Cup. Pretty even break in the front of the field. Connor Zilic in the red and white car goes to the inside. Tyler Gonzalez tries his look around the outside, but doesn't make that one work as Celine Roland. Sheer Adam is just smiling gently to my right. Picked him out earlier on as he was coming through in the second now. Then it's Jared Thomas, reviewed post-race, by the way, that incident that started that involving Jared Thomas. Hmm. And remember, we still have the 10-second penalty on Tyler Gonzalez. Which right now would have him finishing in the 25th position. Well, he, he needs a clean race now and a couple of gaps to break up to try and make some kind of gap because if it's a safety car finish and everyone is behind, then he's going to be way out of the points, and that's going to have a huge, huge uh, uh, impression on his championship, the start of his championship season. And more important for his team, because Sato Motorsport Group, he is the only representative, so they really need him to do well in the race. Connor Zilich from <laughs> Celine Roland, and it is now Jared Thomas, who's eased his way to third, then at about two or three car lengths, two, one car length, it's <laughs> Half a car Gonzalez, length. here he comes down the inside, pushed by Aaron Johnson. No, then, Jeremy Fletcher. Oh, Jeremy Fletcher, excuse me. Wow, and Gonzalez goes all the way up to second and slides through the right-hander at the Le Mans chicane. 
That was a bold manoeuvre and he really stuck it in there. I think he knows he's got to be at the sharp end of the field to pick up any meaningful points here. He does and he needs to build a gap. You know, if I'm the team, I don't think I would have told him at this point that you've got a 10 second penalty because he would have pulled into the pit lane. There are still the bonus points to go for. You want That's the fastest point. lap and you want to lead the most. He's led some laps, although I think once again the bonus points this way are looking the way of Connor Zilich, especially if he stays out front. Zilich then leads them across the line as Whoa. we complete the 11th lap. Five cars with a tiny little break. In sixth position, John Chotuan is trying to come back to them and there's a spin. Julian DaCosta, I believe, spinning through turn one, not his race today. And yes, it is. He gets rejoined, though, and continues around, but now he's lost the main pack. My motion there was a woe because Jean Jodois has showed up with a great head of steam coming through the trioval across the start finish line. He is with Jeremy Fletcher and Gresham Wagner, two of his teammates. That's the light colored car at the head of the second group. Gresham Wagner behind him in the dark colored cars. They go through. The king, the dog leg, the 22 in there is Jeremy Fletcher. He had a good race yesterday. Ah, now, here's Western Workman working his way through as well. What's he learned from yesterday? Scholarship recipient uh, and using that to come into the full championship for a full season in that dark purple. Number 22 car was ninth across the line, sitting in that secondary pack. There's still just a tiny gap, maybe 10 or a dozen cars lengths between the top five then Jean Chetouard and Gresham Wagner trying to bridge that gap then the second the third group rather led by Jeremy Fletcher on the high side coming down the bottom is Western Workman being pushed through by Aaron Johnson uh, Aaron Johnson yes remember how I said they all have teammates well that that's starting to disappear at this point of the race we didn't see this yesterday Shay no nope. it was it was a huge pack of nearly a dozen master mx5s all the way through with no interruption from the safety car and I just wonder if that safety car period one or two people have either lost temperature and pressure in their Michelin tires or maybe They've just got to put another heat cycle through them. Or gain temperature in themselves. Well, all the, of a sudden, the hot heads are starting to prevail. That's a very good point. Well made. Fletcher then leading that third group. What about this second trio of cars? They're trying to come across. This is a bit like the final stages of a Grand Tour cycle race. You've got the Peloton out front, then a couple of breakaway groups. And it's Tyler Gonzalez, he, he wants pace, he's not playing any games here, he's just going to get to the front and keep his foot down, and he's going to make people drag past him, because he's got to break this field up. At the moment, it, with 10 seconds, he would be down in 22nd position, and getting no points. Gonzalez leading from Zilich and Roland, those two from BSI, Gonzalez from Sato Motorsport Group. Then we have Jared Thomas of JTR Motorsport Engineering, Nate Cicero rounding out the top five from MMR. Cicero did not get to race yesterday. He had an electrical issue fairly early on. He was our only DNF. So Cicero not only is digging himself out of a huge points disadvantage yesterday, having finished 28th, he is looking to try and prove that he is a championship contender right off the beginning of the year. Gonzalez continues to push the envelope. He's got Connor Zilic right there. Gonzalez trying not to defend, but he doesn't want Zilic to come through and slow the pace. That's why he's trying to stay out front. A little flash of the brake legs there from Gonzalez. He's not trying to spook the guy behind. He's making sure that the brake pads are in contact with the brake disc, the brake rotor, because he's coming from well over 120 miles an hour here down into the Le Mans chicane, turning left and squaring the curb off, then right, right again, and then straightening and out the exit. And there's still three distinct groups at the front of the field with 12 minutes to go. 10 seconds, though, will still put, Con uh, will still put Tyler Gonzalez down outside the top 20. That first group of five cars, though, they are being closed down upon by the second group of a further nine cars. So this battle for the win is not yet done. We still have a lot of racing to go with just under 12 minutes remaining on the clock. Another sideways moment in that third group as they came across the tri-oval, but it's Gonzalez at the front of the lead. 
Shea, you made a very good point. Gonzalez, by staying there, is racking up the laps led here. Now, we lost a couple under safety car, but that's something else that the other drivers behind him can't ignore. As it is right now, it still goes advantage Zilich, but it is close. If Tyler Gonzalez stays out for the rest of the laps, he can claim those 10 bonus points. So that's why he's still pushing on. But here comes Gresham Wagner in sixth position, leading the second group, which is stretched from three cars to four. And Wagner in the dark colored number five tries to hook on to the leading quintet as they're on the west end of the infield at the moment. Tyler Gonzalez in the white car with the green and red stripe, leading it with just under 11 minutes to go at Daytona. Connor Zilich has been warned for continuous contact on the banking. That is his one. He's got that strike now. If he does it again, race control will take action. Now Connor Zilich has used up his, <laughs> this, this is okay, right guys? Card, he doesn't have that anymore. He's right there again. But this time, there is daylight between the two cars. That's about as close he can, he can get. There's a little bump, and he drops away. There's a little bump, and he drops away. That's not what race control are looking at. They're looking at that continuous contact and sustained contact onto the back straight. Bus stop chicane, as it was formerly known, renamed by Mr. France in a ceremony a couple of years ago that's was yet another handshake between Daytona 24 and Le Mans 24. The first chicane on the Le Mans long straight, the Lin Duato Nadier, or the Mulsan straight, as the Brits call it. That is now the Daytona chicane. And that one has the Daytona logo and script on it. This one has the Le Mans logo and script on it. As we now have a change in the leadership, it's go time for Jared Thomas, who has just pushed through the Number 83 of Nate Cicero to the lead. That's Makumbi Makalia racing, working with JTR. And uh, as I said, it is all hands off at this point. We've got MMR leading JTR, leading Sato. They're all coming together once again. Then two cars from BSI and then two further cars from MMR. So yesterday we saw the strength of that team finishing first and third. Well, now they've got three cars up inside the top eight. I reckon. There's nine cars in that leading group now. Alex Pachura in the 33 and 10th tries to bring the second group back across. They're round about a second and a half or two seconds away. No, it's about a second and a half at the moment. So we've seen before in these races that sometimes it comes down to strategy, sometimes it comes down to bravery, sometimes it comes down to just a bit of good fortune. Which one of those will play out in the next eight and a half minutes around Daytona? Round two of the 2024 championship. Nate Cicero pushed to the front by Jared Thomas, who's there in second place. Third for Connor Zillage in the red and white car, fourth for the white, green and red of Tyler Gonzalez. Here comes Celine Roland again down the inside. Behind him is Jeremy Fletcher and Jean Jordouin and the black car, the number five, or the very dark colour car, the number five, Gresham Wagner. I'm not picking a winner yet. I am not picking a winner yet. Nope, there's a lot of people just biding their time right now, and we have seven minutes and 45 seconds to go, meaning we've got a lot more running around for to enjoy before we give this one the checkered flag. But keep an eye on oh. Jeremy Fletcher getting a push from his teammate, John Jodouin, getting a push from his teammate. That would mean it's a three-car train. Interestingly like there, Fletcher pulled back down in the line. He didn't want to go all the way over the top at this point in the race. Down below the yellow lines, that is Celine Roland in the blue and yellow car. Oh, big lock up by Zilic. Zilic has locked up the left front mission and he's gone super wide. Somehow gets it back onto the circuit. Now, did he flat spot the right foot Michelin there? That was actually good controlled driving in an almost out of control moment. He's hung on to the lead group. 
And that might not be the disaster that it looked. No, it might have been uh, Connor Zilich, who's also racing in the Rolex 24 hours this weekend, breaking it as P2 breaking marker <laughs> instead of the MX-5. Uh, but that was a big save from Zilich, managing to hold it together and actually stay with that main group. Very well done. Uh, fair play to Gresham Wagner as well, who gave him room to come back on. It's really dirty out there. He'll have put some clag on his tyres. May need it. Half a lap or so to clean that up. And there's some debris as well underneath Jared Thomas's car on the right front. He may have picked up some tyre detritus as well. Six minutes 20 to go. Not quite goal time yet. And <laughs> now we have. Have we got another car on the back of that? Is that Bashura who's I, got to the back of that? I believe it is. And Alex Bashura is actually racing this weekend with a heavy heart in loving memory of Albert Bashura on the side of his car and several of his teammates' cars as well. Nice touch. Very. Nate Cicero leading from Jared Thomas, then John Jodouin up into third as oh. another lockup coming into the Lamar chicane. It's Zilich once again. Well, he's got a flat spot on that yep. right front tyre, and that means that he's more likely to stop there. The tyre's not completely round, hence the term flat spot. And as you brake, it'll come round and just catch, and you'll have to release the brake, and then come round and just catch, and you'll have to release the brake. It's not going to get any better for Connor uh, Zilich for the next five minutes. It is a horrible thing to have when you know that there's no time to stop and change it, and there's certainly not that at the moment. Gresham Wagner at the back of this group, pushing Jeremy Fletcher, who goes to the high side. And there's a lot of movement around, four across the track. As in comes Connor Zilich. Yep. I suspect this is because he knows he won't get to the end. Well, has he been uh, assessed a penalty? No. Nope. Yes. Uh, no, that was a warning for uh, Jared Thomas. Jared Thomas has had a warning for continuous contact on the banking. They have a new tyre for Zillage, but with this lap and probably two more oh, to go, speed. is it worth it? Uh, that's the 55. That's Jonathan, Jonathan. Neuter going around. New colours on his car this year. He thought he was going to be the only one running a light blue, and he shows up, and almost everyone is in light blue. So Jonathan was not very happy to see everybody for the photos the other day. I'm not sure that he was very happy with the cars behind him either. As he came around, he got a thump on the inside. Was that Bashura? I, I, maybe. Let's see. Had to have been Bashura. That was the car that was behind him. He did have contact with Jean Salm, actually, as he was spinning around as well. Aaron continuing on. We'll see if race control evaluates that situation. He has resumed, but well down the field. Four minutes to go. Still Sato Motorsport Group leading the way with Tyler Gonzalez, but with that 10-second penalty to come, it's going to well, drop him to where? 18th position now. Still so outside. So effectively, he's made up four or five positions, five or six positions. Um, in the time since we had the restart. He could do with a little bit of a schmozzle behind it that slows a few cars up and pushes them back into the group. But having that spin for Jonathan Nerdoff there, that pushes another car outside of the 10 seconds that he is going to be penalised. Just as long as we stay green, because well, if we go yellow, it's, it's all over for him. 3.23 to go. There's a good master number. Now 3.18. Coming <laughs> down to the tri-oval Gonzalez another lap led for him is he going to steal the 10 points away from Zilic it's going to be close it's going to be very close Nate Cicero with a big push and here comes Weston Workman we haven't called his name very often yet today he's getting a big push from Celine Roland trying to head to the front of the field once again a spot he's occupied quite a few times so far this weekend whether it be in practice or in the race yesterday but he's just gotten a warning for continuous contact on the banking this lap and one more. It will be the white flag next time around. And we've still got a dozen cars in with a shout of the victory. Big move for the number 83, Nate Cicero. Dives to the inside of the track and takes over the lead from Tyler Gonzalez. Gonzalez now knows he's not going to pull away. So he gave up the inside there and he's positioning himself in the pack. That was really interesting to see Gonzalez just ease slightly to the right and almost force Nate Cicero to take the point and through behind him uh, went Jared Thomas. 
as well. So it's Mukumbi Magalia Racing's Nate Cicero that leads from JTR Motorsport, the JT and JTR as Jared Thomas, then Sator Motorsport Group, the white car in third place, the dark coloured car in fourth place is Western Workman for BSI. And what a run it is for the rookie. He was there yesterday but couldn't convert, didn't get himself into the right position. He's the best of the rookies so far. Noah Harmon is in that lead group as well in the number 99. Watch out for him. First, fifth, seventh, and eighth are all McCumby McAleer cars. That is the team most represented within the top 10 right now. Can they work together on this white flag lap to try and get to the front? Well, we know that if you're leading coming out of the Lamar chicane, it means nothing. Big push by Gresham Wagner, and that's forced. John Jadwan, his teammate. John Jadwan onto the high side. He'll have to try and drop in behind the number 99 of Harmon, which he does do. But Johnson was already there. Oh, my goodness me. That was all a little untidy. The white flag is out for round two of the Wheeland Master MX5 Cup for 2024. Three and a half miles of non-stop action to come. We've had one safety car period when the Wheeland MX5 safety car had to take the field under control after some pushing coming out of turn four course the two car incident could have been much worse but right now it is nate cicero that leads the motor race with jared thomas in second place then western workman in the dark purple car then a little gap back to the black car number five of gresham wagner he's under pressure from tyler gonzalez in the white and green car Tyler's got a 10 second penalty, throws it in from a long way back. And it's hammered by the number 22 of Fletcher. And Jared Thomas is out. The guy who has won the second race at Daytona for the last two consecutive years will not be maintaining that streak. He was taken off the track by that push. And Weston Workman also with damage. Well, that was Tyler Gonzalez going down the inside and realizing he couldn't go any further and did exactly the right thing. But Jeremy Fletcher just did not break at all. And all of a sudden, we've got a break at the front of the field. Tyler Gonzalez has got an opportunity here to undo some of the damage of that 10 second penalty. Celine Roland in second, Gonzalez in third, all kinds of rubbing going on and racing going on. At the front of the field, Nate Cicero then leads it for McCumbie McAleer racing into the Le Mans chicane for the final time. He's on his own. We saw this yesterday. I'm not sure there's enough going on. It's side by side again. That's another accident. And this time it's Aaron Johnson who's going to go back down. Tyler Gonzalez doesn't know this is going on behind him, but this is giving him positions because he's got the 10 second penalty. He's been pushed into second. Nate Cicero ahead of this two car train that's coming are they coming quick enough Fletcher goes to the inside Cicero's got enough Cicero is going to take it McCumby McAleer racing will take race two it is Fletcher on the inside outside was Gonzalez who takes in it's Fletcher what? Fletcher got it on the line Gonzalez's 10 second penalty has pushed him down to ninth marvelous stuff that is a great result for Gonzalez because when that 10 second penalty was applied and we were coming out of the safety car, he was in 22nd or 23rd position and he's finished up inside the top nine on corrected time. It didn't really matter whether Jeremy Fletcher got him on the line. It was where he was in relation to everyone else behind and that rubbing and the cars going around has helped Gonzalez to a handful of points. But Nate Cicero it is who's taken it. He'd broken away after a, an incident at the West Horseshoe. Jeremy Fletcher down the inside. And all kinds of pushing and barging and bumping. But I'm pretty certain it was the 20. Well, actually, I think the 22 got help. Now I've seen I that think the again. 22 got help as well from John Jodwan, possibly from the 39. 39. Or from Celine Roland, who came through a bunch of cars to make up a ton of positions, finishing in the third spot. I was nervous for Cicero with such a lead coming out of the Lamar chicane after it didn't work yesterday. Huge incident for Aaron Johnson. And John Jodwan. And John Jodwan. Aaron ending up sideways. And this was all benefiting Tyler Gonzalez because they were dropping time. Uh, we might not have heard the last of this. Race control are looking at the incident at turn five, the West Horseshoe. 
and coming out of the Le Mans chicane. I, I, I'm pretty certain that Nate Cicero was clear of any blame for that. He was towards the front of the field when all that was going on behind him. So the McCombe McAleer racing team, Stephen McAleer, will be on the rev limiter at the moment. Shift up, Stephen, shift up. He will be going bonkers at this, and rightly so. Well, a first, a second, and a fourth in the second race. So the one-two for McCombe McAleer Racing. Three cars within the top five after the first and the third in yesterday's race. This is what we expect from MMR, from two champions in the form of Chad McCombe and Stephen McAleer putting together this race team. This is exactly what they are finally delivering. But look what we had there, Shay, uh, towards the end. The people who did well yesterday all getting pushed down. Uh, so we yeah. had Cicero, Fletcher, Roland, Wagner up into fourth. Noah Harmon was the best of the rookies for Spark performance. Then um, Batura uh, with uh, Ethan Tyler getting up into the top ten in seventh. John Chetouan finished after that sideways moment in eighth. Tyler mm. Gonzalez goes down to ninth with the 10 second penalty. Nick Schaefer in ninth. Heather Hadley, after a horrible race yesterday when she qualified very, very well in eighth, she qualified 18th uh, today and finished 11th. But where is, is Jared Thomas? Answer, down in 16th position. Oh. Western Workman in 14th. Aaron Johnson in 15th. That's some heavy hitters not picking up big points. I know that Race Control is evaluating the contact next door. They are looking into it, and it does look like John Jodouin began that domino effect. I'd agree with so that. perhaps we'll hear more about this after the race. But by my unofficial math, Jeremy Fletcher is our championship <laughs> leader just ahead of Gresham Wagner. Second and fourth for those two drivers here. Oh, my goodness me. The opening of the season has once again paid dividends at Daytona International Speedway. Babendum, in good for more than 100 years old. Great Nate Cicero in his number 83 for Gumby Matt Leo Racing. Heather Hadley had a tough race, but fought back to 11th position. Weston Workman was right at the sharp end of the field as well. We did have our first intervention of the wheel and safety car after the incident on the front straight. Flat spot and tyre for Colin Zilich. And Jonathan Neudorf went around. And then the controversy and consternation at the end at turns five and seven. Nate Cicero coming through the mayhem for McCombe Magalia Racing. That's the first two away. Thanks to Shea. I'm John Hindorf. Bye-bye.